everybody. This week I'll be talking about how to fix display issues when using the Mindstorm's EV3 programming environment on a high DPI display. Now this past Christmas I decided to treat myself to a beautiful new Asus ZenBook with a dazzling 3200 by 1800 touchscreen display. I just love it. This lightweight aluminum workhorse was going to be my travel buddy and I was going to go all over the world with it to various Mindstorm's events and trade shows. So imagine my horror when I came across this. Look at this display um, in the Mindstorm's programming environment. It's essentially for ants. You can see here that if I start a new project that everything is super teeny tiny. I basically need a jeweler's glass to use the software. So that was quite discouraging. As it turns out, I did a little bit of researching on the internet, and this is not a unique problem to the Mindstorm software. In fact, many programs are struggling with the issue of how to display on a high resolution device. And the reason for this is that when Windows loads, it asks if the program is DPI aware. And the default answer is to say yes, which causes these scaling issues on monitors with super high resolutions. So again, after some internet sleuthing, I did manage to come across a recent blog post by Dan Antonelli. And his blog uh, is the, usually focuses on uh, issues that are unique to Adobe Creative Cloud. But here we can see that uh, these same kind of problems are happening, right? There's a before and after comparison. You can see the small um, uh, messed up display and then the after here. And interestingly enough, his fix that he has proposed here on his site actually works quite nicely for the Mindstorm's programming environment. So we'll be walking our way through it and applying the fix to see how it works out. Basically, uh, the two things that we'll be doing is we'll be telling Windows to look for an external manifest file. And the second thing we're going to be doing is creating and placing this file in the Mindstorm's EV3 application directory. So it's worth noting, I would be irresponsible of me not to say otherwise, but before making any changes to your computer's registry, it's always a smart idea to do a backup of the section you'll be working in. So let's take a look at Reggie's editor here. I'm going to click on my uh, Windows Start button, the Windows button, and press R. And I'll type in RegEdit, which happens to already be here, and hit OK. And basically where I want to navigate to in the registry editor is I want to go to H key local machine. So you can see I'm in H key local machine. I can expand that. I'll then go down to software. Find my way to Microsoft. Scroll down some more. And at the very, very bottom here, and you can see, wow, there's ever a lot of things in Windows. We find the Windows folder, current version. And then we have something here called side by side, uh, a folder called side by side. Uh, again, that uh, directory is on your screen if, in case you weren't able to follow along. Now, before doing anything, what I'm going to do is I'm going to back up this side by side folder. So should I make a change and it not gel with my computer, I'm not uh, out of luck. So I'm going to right click on side by side and I'm going to choose uh, export. This will create a backup for me. Again, I can call this folder whatever I want. So let's just call this uh, backup of Windows registry. And today I might even date it. I might even call it like, you know, 02, let's see, uh, 16. Okay, cool. Now, should I ever need to um, revert back to an earlier version of the registry, I can find that folder here. And here we see backup of Windows registry 0216 and just double click run it and everything should be uh, good again. Okay, so coming back to regedit here, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to right click on this side by side folder. I'm going to choose new and I'm going to select uh, D word 32 bit value. And what we're going to call this um, entry here is prefer external manifest. And what this is basically going to do is it's going to tell uh, Windows to use its own default scaling for the application rather than asking the application to scale itself for this high resolution uh, display. So I'm going to right click on this and choose modify. And what we're going to do next here is I'm going to enter in a data value of one and I'm going to choose decimal and hit OK. And with that all done, I can exit out of the registry editor. So I'll close this out. 
And the next order of business is to actually get the manifest file. Now, conveniently enough, Antonelli actually posts this manifest file on his blog. And you can again see the entry uh, for uh, this particular issue up here. If I scroll down far enough, there is a text file that he supplies. And you can see here it's called manifest.txt. Now, I've already downloaded the file. Uh, so if we open this up, I'll, and again, I'll open it with uh, Notepad so we can see what's going on in here. So I've right clicked and I'll choose Open with Notepad. And we don't really actually need to do anything to the file. I'm just showing you what's in it. It's essentially an XML file. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to find the wind, uh, the directory where the Mindstorms EV3 application resides. So in my particular instance here, what I'm going to do is go to my C drive, Program Files x86, go down to where it says Lego Software. Here we can see in my case I have the Mindstorms educational software, but the fix is exactly the same if you're using the retail or home edition. And what we want to find here is the Mindstorms application. So here we can see that the uh, actual programming environment, the IDE is called Mindstorms EV3 and then .exe. So what I'm going to do here is in my manifest file that I've downloaded from Antonelli's site, I'm going to go File, Save As. And rather than saving it as a text document, I'm going to choose All Files. And what we're going to do here is I'm going to call this file exactly the same name, but with a dot manifest appended uh, to it. So let's call this Mindstorms ev3.exe.manifest and hit save. Okay, so we're on the home stretch. The very last order of business here is to find my Mindstorms manifest file. So we see here it's spelt exactly the same with the dot manifest extension and to copy it over into the same directory where the exe for the Mindstorms IDE resides. And it might ask you for administer, administrator permission, so I'll say continue. And let's see what happens after doing that. So if I double click on the if I exit out of the Mindstorms programming environment, and you can, again, you can see how tiny it is. And relaunch the application. Wow, we can see that right off the cuff, everything is much, much better. This text is now readable. If I go to create a new program, add a project, we can see here that uh, all of the uh, programming blocks are all uh, regularly sized. Again, the only uh, issue here is uh, I've noticed that this fix uh, lasts only as long as your next Windows update. So this might be something you have to come back to at a later date. It would be a worthwhile uh, endeavor on your part to keep this manifest file somewhere handy on your computer. Uh, this fix will work pretty much for all Windows applications that are having DPI scaling issues. So that's this week's tech tip. I hope you enjoy it and we'll talk soon.